You guys have been requesting it, and I am nothing if not a people pleaser wanting to bring you guys the most amazing content possible. So today we are bringing you three must-know Azamina Snake Eye combos. What is up, Duelist? Super Insane 18 here, and we are going to just jump right into combo number one, and that is going to show you what to do if you open up with Deception, but there is a caveat, and that is why I'm only playing two copies of Deception if you saw my deck profile, and that is because you need additional cards for Deception to be a starter. As you can see here, we have some cards on the field, so you need Deception, any monster that you contribute, and then any one random discard. This can be anything. I'm just showing it as a talent to show you guys that it can be anything, but let's go ahead and show you guys how the combo works. So we start things off with the activation of the deception. And what this will allow us to do is go ahead and tribute out whatever monster we opened up with to add us our copy of the hollowed Azamina from our deck to our hand, which we can then go ahead and activate. The hollowed Azamina is going to allow us to reveal the Azamina Mu Rasselago, however you want to pronounce this card. Uh, and then we can go ahead and send the deception to our grave to special summon out the Rasselago uh, from our extra deck that we just revealed. On summon, the Rasiliago is going to go ahead and allow us to add for our copy of Wanted, which we can then go ahead and immediately activate, which will allow us to search for our copy of Dia Bellstar. Now, this is why the any discard is necessary, because we want to summon out our copy of Dia Bellstar the Black Witch, getting rid of whatever that other card we have that we are allowed to discard is, and then activate the effect on summon, which will allow us to set a copy of the original Sinful Spoils from our deck to our side of the field. What we can do here is we're going to go ahead and link the Dia Bellstar and the Azamina Fusion, and this is going to go ahead and go into our copy of IP Masquerada. The reason we want to do that is because we want to make sure that we put the uh, Azamina Fusion in the graveyard because of the graveyard effect of the Hollowed Azamina. We're going to go ahead and activate it. That will allow us to shuffle back one of our Azamina cards to add this back to our hand, and this is actually not once per turn. So with that being not once per turn, we can go ahead and activate it one more time. This will allow us to now reveal the Ilya Sylvia, and we can go ahead and send our face down uh, Sinful Spoils Snake Eye to go ahead and summon out the Sylvia, giving us an Omni Negate on summon number four. But most importantly, that actually bridges us into our full Snake Eye line because we can go ahead and use the effect of original Sinful Spoils, banishing it from our graveyard to target our Dia Bellstar the Black Witch, and that is going to allow us to add us our copy of Snake Eye Ash, and then we take that Dia Bellstar that we targeted and we put that on the bottom of our deck. So now we have our Omni Negate, we've bridged into our Snake Eye plays, and we have not yet used our Normal Summon. So we're going to go ahead and Normal Summon out the Snake Eye Ash, activating its effect to allow us to add our copy of Snake Eye's Poplar. Of course, Poplar then activates because it was added to hand, allowing us to summon it to our side of the field, which we can then use its on summon effect to add us our copy of Divine Temple. We'll take the Divine Temple and we will go ahead and activate that, which will allow us to place the Snake Eyes Dia Bellstar from our deck to our Spell Trap position, and then we can go ahead and use the effect of the Snake Eye Ash, sending itself and the Snake Eyes Dia Bellstar to the graveyard, allowing us to summon out our copy of Snake Eye Oak. Snake Eye Oak on summon will activate its effect, targeting the Ash to resummon it back to our side of the field, and now we can go ahead and bridge into the full Fiendsmith line. We're going to take the Snake Eye Ash and the Snake Eye Poplar, linking both of those off into our copy of Moon of the Closed Heaven, and then we can activate the graveyard effect of the Snake Eye's Poplar, allowing us to place the Snake Eye's Dia Bellstar back into our spell and trap zone. We can take the Moon of the Closed Heaven, linking that off into our copy of Requiem, and then we can use the Requiem effect to go ahead and tribute it to summon out our copy of Lacrima the Crimson Tears. On summon, Lacrima the Crimson Tears can go ahead and Foolish Burial or send a card from deck to graveyard, which is going to be the Fiendish, or rather Fiend Smith Engraver. Now with the Engraver in our graveyard, we can activate its effect, shuffling back the Moon of the Closed Heaven to summon itself to our side of the field. With both the Lacrima and the Engraver on our side of the field, we can go ahead and link those off into our copy of Fiendsmith Sequence. And then Fiendsmith Sequence can activate its effect, and we now have the Engraver plus two Light Fiends, so we're going to go ahead and shuffle all three of these back into our deck. And that is going to meet the Fusion Summon requirements for the copy of Fiendsmith's Desiree. 
Here things are going to get a little weird. We're going to go ahead and use the effect of Snake Eye Oak, sending itself and the sequence to the graveyard. This is going to allow us to summon out our copy of Flamberge. And now with sequence in the graveyard, we can go ahead and use its effect to equip it to the Desiree, allowing the Desiree to have two negates. Here we are going to take the IP Mascarina as well as the Flamberge Dragon, and we are going to link them off into our copy of Promethean Princess. This is of course going to allow us to activate the effect of Flamberge Dragon when it goes to the graveyard to summon back out our Poplar and our Ash. Here we can go ahead and use the effect of the Promethean Princess, which will allow us to reborn a fire. Of course, it is going to be the Flamberge Dragon, because then the Flamberge Dragon is going to allow us to place our IP Mascarina into our Spell and Trap Zone, that way we have it for our opponent's turn. Here what we're going to want to do is make sure that we negate the effect of our Promethean Princess, that way we are no longer fire locked. So using the effect of Desiree, we can go ahead and target the Princess, negate its effect, and then we can link the Princess plus the Poplar into our copy of Silo Hat Rabbit. Silo Hat Rabbit of course will activate its effect on summon to allow us to set the copy of Angel Statue Azarune from our deck to our side of the field, and then this is where you can get if you are copying my deck profile. However, while running through these combos, I realized that I probably made a bit of a mistake while we were building the deck, so I want to show you guys what you can do if you just replace one card in the extra deck, and that is actually adding an entire additional negate onto your end board. So at this position, what we can do is we can go ahead and use the effect of the Snake Eyes Diabell Star. That will allow us to play the Oak into our Spell and Trap Zone, and then summon out the Snake Eyes Diabell Star. Here what we can do then is taking the Snake Eyes Diabell Star and the Ash, we can link those off into our copy of Pit Knight Early, giving us an additional negate, because now the Pit Knight Early is pointing to both the Silo Hat and the Desiree, so whenever you use either of these effects, you will be able to get an additional negate off. Now we can go ahead and go to our end phase, and what that is going to do is allow us to reset our copy of Deception, meaning that we can go ahead and just recycle this entire combo on the next turn. So where does that leave us for our opponent's turn? This is a ton of interaction. First and foremost, we have our two negates off the Desiree, of course. We have both the Temple and the Flamberge, which are going to be able to summon out the IP Mascarena. We have our Silo Hat Rabbit, which is actually a spell and trap pop when we use the effect of the Azarune to summon itself. Don't forget the Omni Negate with the Azamina card, as well as still having Promethean Princess live in our graveyard as well, and that was just off of a couple of cards. There is one additional thing that you can do though before you end your turn, uh, which I did forget to mention, and that is you can go ahead and use the effect of Wanted, because you have the banished original Sinful Spoils, you can go ahead and banish the Wanted, put the original Sinful Spoils back on the bottom of the deck, and draw any blank card. So even though that cost you three cards at the start, you end with three cards in your hand and an absolutely crazy board that gives you not only a ton of interruptions, but guaranteed follow-up as well. For combo number two, we are going to show you how you do it if you start with your Diabell Star plus any discard. This is my preferred starter line because it costs you less of your resources, but gets you into the same end board. So let's go ahead and show you guys what we're going to do. We're going to start off with the effect of the Diabell Star the Black Witch, summoning itself by sending whatever card we have, and that is of course going to activate its effect, but we're not going to do what we normally do. With the new Azamina cards, we can go ahead and set the Deception instead of the original, and that is what's allowing us to get into the combo. We're going to go ahead and activate Deception, tributing off the Black Witch that we have, and that is of course going to allow us to add our copy of the Hollowed Azamina. We're going to go ahead and activate the Hollowed Azamina, getting rid of the Deception, revealing the Rosiliago, summoning the Rosiliago to our side of the field, which of course on summon allows us to add a Sinful Spoils, so we are going to add the original Sinful Spoils here. Now the cool thing about the Hollowed Azamina is that the graveyard effect can return cards on your field, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and return it to the hand while shuffling back the Rosiliago, and that is going to allow us to then activate it once again, using the Sinful Spoils that we have in our hand for the reveal and summon of the Ilya Sylvia. That means that we have our Omni Negate on summon number three, meaning that we can play through hand traps, and we are in the exact same spot we were previously. Because we have the original Sinful Spoils and the Diabell Star, we can banish the original Sinful Spoils, targeting the Diabell Star, that will allow us to add our copy of Snake Eye Ash, putting the Diabell Star back on the bottom of the deck, and now we can go ahead and full combo, uninterrupted because of our Omni Negate. We're going to go ahead and normal summon out the Ash, same thing as we saw in the last combo. We're going to go ahead and add the Poplar. Poplar summons itself, adding us the copy of Divine Temple, 
Activating the Divine Temple, we're going to go ahead and place the Snake Eyes Diabell Star. Using the effect of Ash, we will send itself plus the Snake Eyes Diabell Star to summon out our copy of Oak. And then Oak will go ahead and activate summoning out our copy of Ash. For the most part, this is exactly the same, but you will notice we don't have the IP Mascarena yet. So we're going to have to make it a little bit later in the combo. So let's show you guys how we get there. We're going to go ahead and link off the Ash and the Poplar. That is going to go into our copy of Moon of the Closed Heaven and activate the Graveyard Effect of Poplar placing the Snake Eyes Diabell Star back into our Spell Trap Zone. We can link the Moon off into our copy of Requiem, and then Requiem can go ahead and tribute itself to summon out our Lacrima, and Lacrima can use its effect to send the Engraver to the Graveyard. Once again, we can special summon out the Engraver by shuffling back our Moon of the Closed Heaven, and that gives us the materials that we need for the summon of Sequence, but we're not going to do that just yet. First, we're going to use the Graveyard Effect of the Requiem, equipping it to either of our two Fiendsmiths on our side of the field, giving us the free material that we need for the effect of Snake Eye Oak to send itself plus the Requiem, summoning out the copy of Flamberge from our deck to our side of the field. Now we're going to take the Engraver and the Lacrima, linking both of those off into our copy of Fiendsmith Sequence, which we can then use shuffling back the Lacrima, the Engraver, and the Requiem, again meeting the summoning requirements for the copy of Fiendsmith's Desiree. Here we can take the Sequence and the Flamberge. We can link those off into our copy of Promethean Princess, but we want to make sure that we have it in a zone that the Promethean Princess can point to because we haven't summoned our IP Mascarena yet. So we're going to use the effect of the Flamberge Dragon when it goes to the Graveyard, summoning back out the Ash and the Poplar, and now we can use the Graveyard Effect of Sequence to equip itself to our copy of Desiree. Now that we have all of this set up on our board, we can use the Promethean Princess effect to summon back out our copy of Flamberge before before we actually negate it, because the next step is using the Desiree to negate the Princess, getting rid of our Firelock, which will allow us to use the Ash and the Poplar to link into our copy of IP Mascarena. We can then take the Princess and the Mascarena, linking both of those off into a copy of Silo Hat Rabbit, and then Silo Hat Rabbit, of course, is going to place the Azarune from our deck to our Spell and Trap Zone, giving us another couple of interactions. Here we're going to go ahead and use the effect of the Flamberge, placing the IP Mascarena into the Spell Trap Zone, and that that is going to be essentially the same end board. Now, I do want to note that if you are playing something like Harbinger, you can go ahead and summon out the Diabell Star and overlay it with the Flamberge for the copy of Harbinger. I don't think that that's necessary. I'd rather keep the Flamberge on field for the guaranteed follow-up as well as the ability to safely summon back out our IP Mascarina. But that leaves us with an end board of our Omni Negate, a Summon Negate, a Spell Trap Removal, two Negates, and Princess Live Engrave with guaranteed follow-up as well. And now for our third and final combo, I want to show you guys the one card normal summon Snake Eye Ash combo. Now this doesn't get you into the Azamina engine unfortunately, but I do want to show you guys how you can play around something like Nibiru, even with just a simple normal summon of Snake Eye Ash. So we're going to go ahead and normal summon the Snake Eye Ash and activate its effect, of course allowing us to add our copy of Poplar. We can activate the Poplar to summon itself, and then when it is summoned, we can use its effect to add our copy of Divine Temple. Using the Divine Temple, we will go ahead and activate it, and this time, instead of placing the Snake Eyes Diabell Star, we are going to place the copy of Snake Eye Oak. The reason we're doing this is because this is what is going to allow us to play through Nibiru most effectively. We're going to use the effect of Ash sending itself and Oak to summon out our copy of Flamberge. This is now summon number three. For summon number four, we are going to go ahead and link off the Flamberge and the Poplar into our copy of IP Mascarena, and now we can activate both the Flamberge and Poplar in the same chain, using the Poplar to chain block the Flamberge. So Flamberge as chain link one, Poplar as chain link two. Poplar is going to go ahead and summon out the Flamberge, and then the Flamberge is going to be able to summon out our Oak and our Ash. Now, this is the first spot that we are nibbable because these were summons 5 and 6, and if they Nibiru us here, we will be able to use the Divine Temple to summon back out our Flamberge. Flamberge will place the IP Mascarena, and then we still have 4 cards in hand, plus a guaranteed SP Little Knight with follow-up from the Flamberge. But we're going to pretend that the opponent doesn't Nibiru us here and show you guys the full combo. I just wanted you guys to know that you are able to safely play through Nibiru now, because this Flamberge is never leaving the Spell and Trap Zone. 
So on the summon of both of these cards, we're going to go ahead and use the effect of Oak to summon back out our Poplar to our side of the field. And now we are safe to bridge into our Fiendsmith engine. We're going to use the Ash and the Poplar. That is going to link us off into our copy of Moon. And then, of course, we can link the Moon off into our copy of Requiem. Using the Requiem effect, we're going to go ahead and tribute it. That is going to allow us to summon out our copy of Lacrima. And then we can use the Lacrima to send our copy of Engraver from our deck to our graveyard. We can use the effect of our Engraver, summoning it to our side of the field by shuffling back our Moon of the Closed Heaven. And again, that is going to allow us to take the Lacrima and the Engraver and link both of those off into our copy of Sequence. We can use the sequence effect here, shuffling back the Lacrima, the Engraver, and the Requiem. That is once again going to meet the requirements necessary for the fusion summon of the Desiree. So we will have Desiree on our side of the field. We can then go ahead and link off the sequence plus the Oak. This is going to go into our copy of Promethean Princess. Here we'll use the Promethean Princess to summon literally any fire. We only have three options, but it doesn't matter what you summon because you are just going to link it away. So now we're going to go ahead and use the effect of the sequence in our graveyard, equipping it to our Desiree, allowing our Desiree to activate its negate. The negate will go ahead and negate the princess, getting us out of that pesky fire lock. And then we can take the princess and the poplar and link both of those off into our copy of Silo Hat Rabbit. Silo Hat Rabbit, of course, is going to go ahead and set our copy of Azarun, and this is what we are going to end on. Now, this doesn't look that threatening, but when you really break it down, it is incredibly powerful. This is seven interruptions plus four cards in your hand, and we are playing, what, 15 hand traps? So you have an 83% chance of seeing at least one hand trap in those other cards. Um, but yeah, so the interruptions that we have, of course, obviously we have the two negates off of the Desiree. We have a spell trap pop off of the rabbit when we summon the Azarun, which the Azarun in and of itself is a special summon negate. We are able to summon the Flamberge off of the temple, which turns IP Mascarena into an SP Little Knight. SP Little Knight being two additional negates, as well as giving us the guaranteed follow-up from the effect of Flamberge, because Flamberge will be able to summon back everything in our graveyard. Poplar allowing us to search for the original Sinful Spoils, not to mention we still have the princess live for an additional pop as well so that is just an incredible amount of interruption all off of a normal summon snake eye ash while at the same time guaranteeing you have at least some kind of board through nibiru and there you guys have it that is going to be my azamina snake eye combo tutorial hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned something if you did you know the deal make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell like comment share with your friends and as always don't forget to check out the channel sponsor dueling guard using code insane 18 or my link in the description down below you can get five percent off as well as helping to support the channel if you want to see the fire king variant of this deck it is coming very soon so make sure you guys stay tuned for that but as always thanks for watching